Welcome to Seasons of Grace, your daily dose of inspiration and reflection from the writings of Archbishop Joseph Raya. As we prepare for the Nativity of our Lord, we will be reading selections from his work entitled, Christmas, Birth of Our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ in His Private Life. Introduction, Cycles of Church Worship and Feast Days. The daily services of the Church's worship are regulated and coordinated by two cycles, the Paschal Cycle and the Cycle of the Nativity of Our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Easter Cycle comprises the ten weeks before Easter, the Traodion, and the fifty days after Easter, the Pentecostarian. The Cycle of the Nativity, or Christmas Cycle, extends from the Feast of the Nativity on December 25th to the Feast of the Presentation of the Child to the Temple 40 days later on February 2nd. The cycle of movable feasts is built around Easter, the Feast of Feasts. The Byzantine Church divides all the weeks of the liturgical year into groups of eight weeks according to the eight Byzantine musical tones. Each week is called by the tone in which the office of the Sunday is chanted. The cycle of the eight tones, the Octoechos, begins with the second Sunday of Easter, the Sunday of St. Thomas. St. Thomas Sunday introduces the first tone and determines the succession of the other tones for the rest of the liturgical year. Holy Week does not fit into its group of weeks. It is set apart as an introduction and preparation for the celebration of the Resurrection on Easter Sunday. The week of the Resurrection is set apart too. It does not fit in, because it is considered an extension of Easter Sunday, its brightness and its glory. It is called Bright Week. It is the eighth day, day of the Perusia and of the Kingdom of Christ. Easter is called by St. John of Damascus the Feast of Feasts because it gives all the other feasts and our Christian religion itself meaning and credibility. The second cycle of the church worship, concomitant with the Easter cycle, is the cycle of the Nativity of our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Nativity has been fixed on the 25th day of December, about the time of the winter solstice. This date of December 25th makes it easy to fix the date of the conception of the Word of God in the womb of Mary on the 25th day of March, the time of the spring equinox. It makes it easy also to determine the date of the circumcision and official naming of our Lord on the eighth day of his birth, January 1st, and of his presentation to the temple on the 40th day of his birth, which falls on February 2nd. Christmas is called the mother of all feasts, since it introduces the new history of the New Testament and determines the end of the Old Testament, as represented in the person of John the Baptist, who is called the forerunner and announcer of the coming of Christ. The Baptist is the last breath of all the prophets and last event of the Old Testament. According to St. Luke, his mother Elizabeth conceived him five months before the archangel Gabriel was sent to Mary to obtain her consent to conceive the king of all. Elizabeth conceived and for five months she kept to herself. In the sixth month, the archangel Gabriel was sent by God to a town of Galilee. He was to tell Mary that she too was to conceive with our Lord and God. Consequently, John was conceived on the 23rd of September the time of the autumn equinox, and was born on the 24th of June, the time of the summer solstice. His death was fixed on the 29th of August, in the Byzantine Rite, the last day of the Church's liturgical calendar, which indicates the end of the Old Testament. All these commemorations of John the Baptist are set apart by the Church with special care and surrounded with great ceremonies and poetry. For the Byzantine Church, John has the most important role as the noblest representative of the Old Testament and of God's faithfulness to humanity 
through the history of the people of Israel, a history now completed by the coming of Christ. We hear in the Gospel of St. Luke, And the Lord spoke to the people about John. What did you go out to the wilderness to see? A reed swaying in the breeze? No, a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and much more than a prophet. He is the one of whom Scripture says, See, I am going to send my messenger before you. He will prepare the way before you. I tell you, of all the children born of women, there is no one greater than John. In all the celebrations in honor of John, we proclaim that Christ is King and Master of times and seasons, and that he has harmoniously and peacefully blended in himself both the Old and the New Testament without opposition or rejection. On the day of his nativity, Christ our God showed his identification with our humanity. On the fortieth day thereafter, he introduced his humanity to the temple of God. Ultimately, on the day of his resurrection, he introduced a new humanity into the world, and on the fortieth day after that event, the day of his ascension to heaven, he introduced the new world and the new humanity to God, Father, Spirit. In the incarnation of the Word of God, heaven came down to earth, and in his ascension, earth went back to heaven. Christ God became man so that man can become God. In every event celebrated in these two cycles of Easter and Christmas, the Church invites humanity to rejoice, to be happy, to dance and clap hands. Even mountains and valleys and all nature are equally invited to share in the joy of the feast, because it is a celebration of God's love and care for His creation. The baptized who hear these exhortations, are filled with joy and peace because they see, hear, smell, and touch the reality and truth of their divinization. They realize that they are a product of an infinite divine love, that they are immersed in divinity in their present life, and that their final destiny is God himself. These feasts are celebrated in liturgies always alive, full of drama and suspense. The dramatic presentations are the space and refuge where every discourse of theology and all our ecclesial life find renewal and spiritual vitality. In them we find heaven on earth, the kingdom to come, the nourishing Eucharist, and Christ who becomes alive and true in the proclamation of the gospel. Thank you for listening to today's Reflection on Seasons of Grace. If you want to send this episode to a friend, you can find it and lots of other great programming at godwithusradio.org. A very special thank you to Madonna House Publications for permission to use the writings of Archbishop Joseph Raya in this podcast. <laughs>